It is Tuesday night. It is eight o'clock here in the Midwest. Do you know what? Do you know what? Do you know who it is and what it is or where it's at? Well, it is the DJ Roundtable. Yes, it's another week, another fun time. And as always, we have a lot of great DJs from all around the country. And always, we want to thank everyone here. Uh, oh, we, we got Taylor here. Um, hello, Taylor. How are you? Good. We were just having some internet problems from oh, yeah, the, I know the what... storm that came through yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were we were lucky last night. Uh, if you guys don't know, here in the Chicagoland area, we had some great thunderstorms rolling through here and through Wisconsin. Uh, and unfortunately, Taylor, because she's to the east of me in beautiful state of Indiana, she uh, got the uh, aftermath of what went through my area. Uh, but uh, yes, uh, just that's a lot. That's life in the Midwest, and unfortunately, that stuff happens. But you know. Uh, a yeah, few tornadoes, and who, who cares, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't see Dorothy. We didn't see. We didn't see Oz. So we're good there. <laughs> but again, I want to thank you for tuning in tonight and tuning in here, and always welcome here at the DJ Roundtable. We always have a seat for you, so make sure you do me a favor. You're watching here on Twitch. We're live on Twitch on Tuesday nights at eight o'clock at night Central Time, nine o'clock on the East Coast, and you guys out on the West Coast out there surfing. It is six o'clock in the evening. Um, and if you're on YouTube, do me a favor. I need help. The algorithms do hold us back and hold us down. So help me slay that beast known as the YouTube algorithm. And do me a favor. Make sure you click the like button. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the bell icon. And if you want to share it, you know, share the video with uh, people. I know uh, DJ Mikey Mike over here in Pennsylvania does that. That's always greatly appreciated. And hopefully, uh, again, you're enjoying yourself. You got to ask a question, comment, critique, criticism, tomfoolery. Say it down below. Ask questions. We always like to hear stuff from everyone. And we want to make sure that everyone here has fun and enjoy themselves. With that said, again, we're going to start the show. But uh, again, really quickly, we had some lovely weather coming through. So uh, hopefully uh, Taylor and Jordan have great uh, connection right now off their phone. Thank God for a wireless uh, technology. Uh, of course, we got uh, North and South Carolina covered here. And uh, we should have uh, Wisconsin covered. Uh, I'm hoping that... Uh, we get California covered. Hopefully, Matt will be coming in tonight. Uh, he is on vacation. He said he's going to try and see, but there is no guarantee. So like anything else, you know, we hope that you're enjoying yourself. Now, with that said, let's go on with the rest of the show. Uh, over the past week or so, I've been um, looking at a few things on uh, forums on uh, DJ setups and DJ uh, this and DJ that. And I wanted to ask you guys, uh, when you go looking for how to look for, or actually how to improve yourself or how to grow your business or how to, what is the next hot thing to go for? Is it, you know, the pixel sticks or the LED light sticks, kind of like I use the Asteras? Is it a new kind of uplighting? Is it a new kind of, you know, sparkler? What is the things you're looking for to inspire you to go, hey, I need to add it into my my setup. How do I, you know, how do you improve yourself? Do you look at ones now? It's a big thing is the LED uh, panels. So you said putting a TV in the front like Jeff and I do. People, I've seen these DJs with big, huge LED panels that, you know, they're covering half a wall with it and they have video or they have gobos or they have whatever on it. Uh, so the thing is that, you know, is that the next trend? Is that the next thing? You know, I know a lot of DJs have sparklers. A lot of DJs do dance in the cloud and it's become more standardized throughout. But what is the next hot thing? How do you find that? Is it you, are you perusing or through uh, manufacturers? Are you looking at, you know, retailers such as like Sweetwater or uh, um, one of the other DJ stores that you're looking through and seeing what new equipment are have coming in from one manufacturer? Like, hey, is this the thing that separates me from other DJ services? So, again, uh, I'm going to start with Jeff in beautiful North Carolina there. 
what inspires you? How do you get your inspiration to add things to your repertoire for equipment? And where do you search? Where do you look at? Do you go on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok? What is your place to search for that to find new hot stuff? Um, all the above. I, I um, you know, I will follow other DJs on Instagram, uh, YouTube, various places and see what they're doing, what they're, uh, uh, you know, what they're using, what they're buying. Um, you know, there are some out there that are, you know, dealers that deal with uh, certain manufacturers that, uh, you know, uh, you know, basically I, I see a lot of new stuff coming out, but I usually wait until I see it being used pretty widely before I will think about it. Um, but for me personally and my, uh, for my DJ setup, it is pretty limited to what I can uh, feasibly uh, set up by myself uh, or with my son. Uh, so it's kind of limited to that. Uh, and there's also a budget there as well. But, uh, but you know, it, it's, uh, it, it's, I don't want to have to hire, you know, another person that that's just my business model. Uh, others you know, are different. So uh, for me, I've found a sweet spot that gets a good look. Uh, that gets a good sound and I can pretty much, you know, do the entire setup by myself. So that's, um, yeah, I, I'm not really looking to buy anything new right now. You know, I've looked at the tubes. Uh, I just don't see that big of a need for them. I haven't had any, any clients that have requested them. Uh, and I don't see uh, a whole lot of value, um, uh, you know, replacing some of the lights that I have with tubes at this point. So that could change, you know, the more I see them, the more I could, you know, I could like them. And at some point I may buy them. Yeah. You know, I said the, probably said the same thing about moving heads 15 years ago, you know, 20 years ago. So, um, it is what it is, but, uh, I, right now I don't have anything on my horizon that I need to buy to supplement my setup, but I've always got my eyes open. And, and if there's any money in my wallet, it is usually burning a large hole in it. So sometimes you just need to spend money, <laughs> but yeah, th this currently is very, I don't, don't have that need. This, this is very true. And that's the one of the things that you have to look at what you want budget, what you want, what kind of look you want. And I feel that a lot of it, some of it is driven by certain DJs. You see those DJs doing a huge uh, truss with a huge video wall. They're flying arrays. You know, they have, you know, they're running big, huge sound systems covering, you know, um, basically a, a whole entire gym for a prom or for a homecoming. And you're like, oh, I want to do that, too. But you start going into and looking at our friends over at Top Light D uh, DJ. And if you get a chance to, it'll be a link down below for Top uh, Light DJ. Uh, and they've been on the show. They'll be back in the show again. Uh, they do have a video wall. Uh, basically they have a couple of different, uh, basically pixel sizes and the one cheap one, which is, uh, 3.9 pixels. Um, it's a nine, nine, almost 10 foot by six and a half foot wall. It's $15,000. So again, if you want to get yourself into a nice, cool led wall, it can be very expensive. Also, they have the booths too, the, the really cool mm -hmm. DJ booths. Uh, with the LED, uh, they have one for sixty seven hundred. Uh, when that came in the market, I think that was like thirty five hundred or four grand for it. Uh, now it's up to sixty sixty seven hundred. And then they, of course they have the uh, the nicer one with the better screen, their new improved booth for eleven uh, eleven thousand. Uh, and then they do have the uh, prison booth, which has you putting a TV in the front and has the casters and folds which they also talked about here, that right there is $3,900. So again, you could spend some money very quickly with a manufacturer for stuff. And the thing is that you're trying to pick what is the thing to go to. You know, some people are eating French fries and not sharing with everyone else here, especially doing a, a car show. <laughs> oh, Dinner, by the man. way, before I forget, I have something. And I wanted to wait till he was here. Did that finally show up? Uh, yep, it showed up. And I have my official DJ Brantley sticker here. So I have I have a couple here. 
So this is a cool thing. I have one. Uh, I'm going to put a, a couple of them up on social media when I do a gig this weekend. I'll take a picture with it uh, just to uh, send it to Brentley and show him that uh, his love and his uh, sticker is here. And if you want to send a sticker, send me a message on Instagram. Uh, I'll, give you, I'll give you an address to send it to. You can send it to the address and uh, maybe you'll get your sticker up here. Brentley has stickers everywhere. We want to make sure his love is everywhere and his stickers. So if anyone here uh, wants to put send a sticker to me, hey, I will probably put it up. But going back to, again, the gear, that's one of the things, again, looking at YouTube, looking at everywhere and trying to figure out what is the next hot trend. Where do you want to put your money at on gear or on stuff? And that's the hard part. And the next person I want to go to is actually is Brentley. He just got, well, I'm actually, he's eating. I'm going to skip him for now. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, I know he just got some, some uh, tube uh, lights. Um, but I'm going to go over to Jordan and Taylor, which uh, they're chillaxing there, relaxing. But the thing is that uh, they're probably planning for the next purchase, for the next thing they want to add to their repertoire for their business. Because they do more than just DJing. They have a bunch of stuff going on there. But anytime you look for stuff for your business, be it for events or be it for DJing or be it for whatever, where do you look at? Where do you where do you try and find trends? How do you find a hot new next it item? I follow a lot of DJs on the social media, uh, watch their stuff, but I'm definitely the guy who hates anything that's trendy just because it's trendy. Um I just can't march to the same beat as everyone's drum. I don't know why. But uh, I really want some chroma cannons. I just haven't really pulled the trigger yet. No reason in particular. I just can't decide how many. Buy them all. <laughs> just don't tell your wife. Oh, well, no, she knows. <laughs> but that's, that's the last that's person to be mad. Yeah, I, she, well, she would she would like it. She would join it with you. Unlike with me with Tracy, she would be like, "What? We need." <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing you have to look at is budgeting for whatever you want to get, and make sure that you have um, make sure you had enough money in the in the bank to buy it, or in a way to finance it so it's not killing you via credit card or whatever. And a lot of especially retailers, uh, Sweetwater. Uh, Guitar Center, there's a bunch of them that have special uh, financing on their cards. If you have one of their cards, you can buy something through there. You can actually prolong that payment and not have a big, huge payment per month, which is nice. But I, what would you say? I'm actually pretty uh, happy with uh, Sweetwater. I did just order some speakers from there. And oh, what did you order? Service. Uh, I ordered, I just got two EV Evolve 50s and two Mackie Thump 12s, a Mackie Thump 15, and a Mackie Thump Go 8. Oh, okay. Do a little upgrade on audio, huh? <laughs> I don't know if that's an upgrade. I had I had some pretty nice EVs that I sold that I'm, I miss, but they just I just couldn't carry two 18s and two 15 wood speakers anymore. I will tell you, going from a two-way cabinet and subs to over to a raise, I I love it. I love the the sound of it. I love the ease of use of it. Um, and again, the, the Evol fifties are a good speaker. I I use the our CFJH because I like to sound a little bit more on them and the availability to just the height of the head. Um, but again, you're going to a very solid speaker. And again, everything else that you're getting that you ordered. Solid, solid speakers. So yeah, it's a they're solid speakers. It's just the you, you waiting for those two eighteens to thump in that song you've been listening to for years on it, and it just doesn't. And you, you know, that's all. I, I, it's a it's a, it's a different way of doing. That. It's a different way of doing sound. It is is it, it's a it's different, but it's still. I don't know. My yeah, they're great my speakers. Um. But when you go to the um, like the shows, when you go there and uh, you look at uh, the manufacturers there to have, you know, stuff like we had to have Marquee or you go up to DJ's Live or you go to, you know, uh, X is coming up uh, next month in uh, Atlantic City or you got to Vegas. Uh, when you go out there and look at the gear out there, these manufacturers, they're hawking 
everything from cables to booths to toilet paper to everything in between. When you look at that stuff, do you see the crowds around the area? If you see a big crowd, you're like, hey, what's that? Or do you look for something that's unique and different than not everyone else has kind of be the leader and be like the first one to have it? Me? Yeah. Uh, I rather I would go with unique. I, I rather be unique and different than have something that everyone has, especially um, not. I know it doesn't pertain to DJ, but like especially with the decor and stuff, we always say that like I rather it's not that I don't want the nice Max booth. It's I rather have something that other people don't, I guess. Well, you, you have a nice. Try, I'm just basically trying to make it look pretty. That's all. I don't. I don't look at. <laughs> I'm like, what's pretty? You know, what's gonna look nice? Even like for our DJ, you know, setup. I'm just like, what? I just want to make it look pretty. And that's the imp that's the important thing when you have to look at. There's different ways of looking at things, and having that option, having your your partner there, not only your business partner but your life partner. Uh, that I relay a lot of things on Tracy when I look at things and see things. I talk to her. First thing she tells me is, you know, well, okay, what's the, what's the cost? Is first ask is what's the cost? <laughs> first question, what, how much is it? Very first question, how much is it? Where is it? Who else has it? Why do you want this? You need to build a case on why because, again, I come from a corporate background. She comes from a corporate background. And when you go to ask, I want to do fill in the blank, you need to have a reason why more than this, I want it. And that's the yeah, thing. If you have a market and stuff take... like that for that sale and for the item, it's great. And yeah, how long does it take to earn that back? Or you exactly, know, what's the the purpose behind it? Is it even something you're going to charge for? Is it something that makes your weddings better? Those are two different things. Oh yeah. But... Is it you know? Is it something else that you're looking at? You know, what is the cool trend? And talk about cool trends. I'm going to go to the man who has cool in his name, cool thing right there in beautiful South Carolina. And also happens to have a new podcast. He's dropping a new podcast over on Spotify. Cool thing. Called you want Groove. to tell everyone about your podcast? Well, the podcast is called Groove on the Go. It's all about mobile DJing. And I just uploaded two new episodes, an intro and an intro about myself and how I became a DJ. There you go. So you what? It out, it's on Spotify. It's called Groove on the Go. Now, cool thing. I know you spend money very wisely yeah. and we we're just talking before coming on here in the green room about a little bit about computers which is again something that you look at and you're talking about getting a new computer and yeah. how do you how do you look at things how do you look at trends either on a computer new piece of gear new light new whatever how where, where do you usually turn to to see that new item that you're like okay i want to get that i want that how do you do how do you decide to get that well I mainly look at like YouTube and watching videos from like DJ Bar and Nick Minnelli and people who do like pro reviews. And I'm thinking to myself, is this what I really want? Because I know a lot of stuff is like really, really expensive these days. And with having with being one of the cheapest DJs in South Carolina, it's hard for me to afford pretty much anything, really. So I, I just look at the price and what I can't afford. I mean, they go to like Amazon or Guitar Center to buy the stuff that I actually need. So I don't really have a want, but a need. Like if I need to upgrade something, then I look at what the price and how much I'm going to spend. And that's one of the things, again, when you have a budget you're trying to stay with, and doesn't matter if it's a computer or a cable or whatever, you want to make sure you're staying in that, in that budget, but also looking at different you know, other DJs or if it's something new trending, something you've seen. Do you, I know you do a lot on TikTok. Is TikTok one of the places you look at for stuff or is it more YouTube? If the stuff is on my For You page, but I've seen a lot of political stuff on my For You page. It's really weird. And I actually recently got something brand new from a DJ. So DJ Mikey Mike, if you're watching this, thank you for the sound switch because you literally saved my life. See, there that, you go. Well, you made, yeah. made life easier for a cool thing there with a sound switch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Dixon, I know that uh, you know a lot of things about trends and stuff like that, especially being 
a music teacher over there in the great state of Ohio. And thank you for coming in tonight, as always. Um, where do you get your inspiration? Where do you get your what do you, your looks and stuff like that? How do you find the new hot trending thing for a DJ when you go to buy gear or the new, uh, you could say the new chocolate fountain is something that you we need to have to be competitive with other DJs or something to be different from other DJs? Um, usually through YouTube videos or um, just any kind of like media that I might see on TV or if I'm out and about and I see something that somebody's doing that I think is pretty cool, I, I try to um, see how I can use that to up my game and make it my own. So it's just pretty much those two um, places. And it's a lot uh, where I'm at now is it's more so a, a, a need and not exactly trendy. If it's something that I noticed that I can, that I, that I have outgrown or can help my workflow, then um, that's what I'll do. Go and try to get it. Okay. And then um, have, you, I, um, have you looked at like going to a, one of the shows anytime soon to like come to Marquee or go out east to uh, DJ Expo or go to any of the shows to go look at new gear or you're more or less just watching uh, the uh, videos on YouTube and watching the manufacturer release new gear? Yeah, I'm just doing that right now. But since I won't have a like a daytime job that I'm locked into, maybe I can start going to those things more freely. Maybe maybe you can come here and finally take you to lunch yeah. or buy you a coffee or something, you know? <laughs> Marquee is next year, next June. So if you're yep. uh, looking for your calendars next June, Marquee will be here in the Chicagoland area. Uh, I kind of hope maybe uh, he'll have uh, the same hotel, if not the same hotel, maybe a different hotel. We'll see where Casey puts his show at. But um, uh, I don't know. Have you guys been to Marquee? And if you did, have been, down in the chat, say what you thought of Marquee if you've been there. I didn't get a chance to go just because of everything going on here. And I wanted to go, but just didn't get a chance to do it. So now I want to go to the man, the myth, the legend, the man who I have stickers of, who uh, – um, Kevin in Ohio says, do the stickers go on all those trash can picks I see in Driftless? Uh, in one of the <laughs> chat groups that we're in, I'm with Brent Brentley, uh, Driftless DJs. Um, they have a thing up there in Wisconsin. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a Wisconsin thing in the group that they, uh, take pictures of trash cans trash can? at yeah. venues for some reason or another fascinated by them. Uh, I keep on threatening to take pictures of uh, garbage trucks, and I actually will. I actually have put that up there a few times um, to tease them. But uh, I, you know, it, <laughs> I guess Kevin wants to see your sticker on some uh, some uh, trash cans there. But uh, <laughs> since you uh, <laughs> since you just bought some uh, uh, cool uh, pixel sticks or uh, LED tubes, you or whatever you want to call them. Um, what was your trend? What was your reason why you went over to that? What made you pull the trigger finally to uh, get them? Because I'm addicted to buying gear, probably. Uh, I I honestly, looking at my setup before, I, I'm like, what would they look like with my all black or all white setup? Turn your volume up a little bit. <laughs> Is that volume better? Up. There you go. All right. But yeah, so... I really thought they would look good with my all black or all white setup, and I wanted to see it. And if I absolutely hated it, I was just going to sell them and be, okay, you're done. But I used them on Saturday, and I'm like, oh, yeah, you made the right call. And it's partly because the facades I'm using are modeled after dragon front boards. So it has a different look than the plain white, you know, or all white or all black facade. So it adds a little bit more of a flair to everything I'm offering. And with that, like the gear problem, I mean, I definitely have a problem buying gear. I saw Mike Walter on Facebook today making a joke about uh, forget Amazon Prime days, which I'd already spent a few hundred, more than a few hundred dollars on this morning. Uh, he's like, men's warehouse is having a sale. And I'm like, at the one time I have nothing to do today, I caught that on my feed. And next thing I know, I bought what, two or three suits that were four or $500 suits for under $100 each. I couldn't pass up the deal. They're slightly bright and more obnoxious than my other ones. So I'm like, yeah, why not? 
And then for Prime Days today, it was like, oh, I need cables. Oh, you need a few odds and ends. Oh, why don't you get another set of Phoenix Pro mics for your, you know, for another booth? And you can take the ones you don't like out that have the labs on them and actually use the labs at a ceremony again. So, yeah, I've gone. It's close to a grand dumped today for no reason except everything was on sale. Just, and, you know, do I, and like how cool thing was saying, he's weighing out, you know, how much the gear costs versus how much he's going to use it. And a lot of people are like that. And I'm not like that. I'm like, oh, that's going to look cool in my setup. I'm going to buy it. Just like I haven't, I don't know if I've told everybody on the round table, I bought a bunch of blinders. I've got two of the P2s or the P1 circle blinders and four of the P2 tower blinders. They're going to be going with my setup. So I have two different lighting packages to offer with my premium setups. That was the intention. And I'm just like, well, they, in part and parcel with that, it's just going to look cool. So go get it. So it looks cool and will make me stand out. Like you were saying, just a little bit from everyone else in my market. So, so now, part now, and parcel with my. Now, now the question addiction. is with your setup, are you going to dump the, uh, the pars and replace the pars with a couple blinders and go at sticks? It depends on what. I want to see what a lot of it looks like when I have it all like set up. So I'm going to set up all my setup, like my white setup and my black light up setup. I'm going to do those with the blinders and see how I like them and see if I like those versus, you know, four pars, moving heads and sticks. And then that, cause that's kind of where I'm weighing out the package, you know, what, how I'm going to separate the two for setups when I sell the packages. And obviously the one with the blinders, I think I'm going to kick up a few more dollars considering how much I dumped on those, it would be in my best interest to try to recoup on the sale price rather than do the long burn and just continually use them to recoup my price, my payments. See, I would, I would say I would go, I would stick to, I would stick personally with the moving head. I would dump the pars, go with the, have a couple of the blinders and go with the sticks. Cause you can do so much stuff with the sticks and with the moving heads. Oh, yeah. And the blinders you're using every so often. Uh, the, the pars are nice, but it, it takes a lot of real estate up. And I, I would say, if I was looking at like at your setup, you got rid of those two pars with the, the yeah. scrims. It would clean up a lot of that and make it a much, it looks less, but then you would have this big, huge bang of light all of a sudden that knocks people's sh shoes off. See, and that's, that's a huge the thing. Of, see, with record box lighting, I can control that. Unlike any of these, like sound switch, uh, AI, uh, DJ AI lighting, whatever it's called, or wolf mitts, I can adjust my light's dimness on the fly. So if I set the first thing going and I'm like, yeah, you're too bright, I can literally just tap it into my, in my laptop and control how much signal of the light is going out. So that's not even an issue. Whereas all the other apps that are using for lighting modes don't have that built in big game and like and this is why like everybody's like why do you use record box i'm like for the mobile aspect of it it's a no-brainer when i can do stems you know my hot cues my effects and my lighting control all in the pads of my deck it's a game changer and so i don't need you know the wolf mix or extra box of control over here plus my laptops it clears up a lot of space and that's the thing is that what you know, works for DJ Brentley, may not work for you, may not work for Cool Thing, may not work for Jeff, may not work for me. Everybody needs to find their own things and do their own thing, but also you want to have feedback from other people too. Getting that feedback is always important. Hey, you know what? Uh, your thought of this, the thought of that. And you don't got to be mean, but you can say, hey, you know what? Um, have you thought about doing this or doing that? And it is one of the things that we always want to look going forward. We don't want to say, hey, you know what? I'm going to keep the same look all the time. And there's DJs out there who have basically one look. And again, that's fine and great. Some DJs like myself, I know Jeff does. I know Taylor and Jordan does. Uh, Brentley definitely does. Uh, and I think Dwayne has, you know, we have a couple of different audio set, um, systems. We have a couple of different looks, a couple of different setups. So we can offer customers, kind of customize a little bit and offer some packages and have different price points because 
this customer may not want to have all this or all that, may not want all white stuff, may want this, may want that. And you can kind of like work together with that and do stuff with it. And that's gives you versatility having that. And, you know, again, Jordan Taylor just dropping a bunch of money for speakers. That's a huge thing, but that gives them tons of versatility on be able to do an event, do a ceremony, have a nice sound system. You want a certain look in a certain way, they can do that without a problem. They want to do something totally different, look a totally different way, or something bigger that you know a line array won't work that well for the 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 comm arrays. Well, then they have other speaker systems, and that's the thing is that having more than one tool in the toolbox is very important because you guys heard me say it here before in the show. If the only tool in the toolbox you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And that's not what you want. You want to have multiple tools. And having that option to go to things is very important. And again, finding that tool, like you go to Home Depot or you go to the Mac truck or wherever you find those tools at, you want to find a cool new tool. Again, YouTube's great. You know, other social media platforms are great. But also you have to decide, do I need this? Do I want this? Will this work for me? And that's one of the things, you know, some people are le- are basically uh, limited by budget. Some people are uh, limited by space. Uh, like you heard Jeff before, he, something he can't set up by himself. He doesn't want to need 30 people to go set up a big screen. If he And you can't fit in the back of his vehicle, then how can he do it? He's always got to bring a trailer. He doesn't want to do that, which is understandable. If you have someone like, you know, Brentley, who, he doesn't want, you know, uh, have 40 people again setting something up or has 40 people to set stuff up. It all boils down to what people do. And everybody does a little different things. And we just lost, <laughs> here they go. they're out there back. <laughs> they're coming back in. Uh, gotta love the interwebs. Gotta love the internet. Now, yeah, there you guys, you guys are back. Yes. <laughs> you gotta love the interwebs. But it's one of the things that, you know, when you look at things and you do things, it's entirely up to you. And, I, I love the fact that all the DJs here, we all think differently. And it's just like you guys out there. We all have different entrants and all different thoughts on how to do things. And you're if you're if you're interested in this or that, if lighting's your big thing or sound's your big thing, you look at things differently than other people do. And again, giving feedback's one thing, but the other thing is also, you know, do things that you like, do things that you that you feel is good, but also look at what's going out there, look at trends and see what's what's popular. Um, so the next thing I want to ask you guys and talk to you guys about really, um, really quickly is, uh, have you guys seen or not, uh, a lot of stuff coming up with wintertime and Christmas and stuff like that already. I'm seeing it already. I see the Halloween stores coming up. They're already opened up. Uh, they were putting uh, signs up for uh spirit Halloween at a few locations, tracing our route, driving around, uh, this past weekend. Uh, and we saw signs and I'm seeing stuff for Christmas stuff already. It's, it's, it's not even the end of July, <laughs> you know, yeah. we're, not, we're not even in August yet. The kids are still out of school, but yet, you know, Halloween, it's creep. As soon as after 4th of July, you know, the, the red, white, and blue and the fireworks are pushed off to the side and, and the lemonade and they go right to Halloween. The next big thing, well, late Labor Day than Halloween, but the next big, ho- big holiday is Halloween. And then Christmas afterwards, are you guys going to go to Spirit Halloween or one of the Halloween stores and look and get some stuff add to your gear? And do you do Halloween parties? Do you get people calling you up going, I want a Halloween themed wedding? Uh, I, I've done it. I've done it a, a, a few times, more than a few times. Uh, but do you actually go to the Halloween store and actually buy stuff for your business or for yourself, do you do do you set your house up? Do you, you know, dress everything up? And it's just the time you start going there right in the beginning and get all the cool new stuff. So I'm gonna ask cool thing, cool thing. Uh, what do you think? Halloween? Are you you all in? Do you go get stuff? Well, mostly costumes, but I haven't had a Halloween party in six years. Because my brother's off to college doing his own thing. My sister's off doing her own thing. They're all out in South Dakota. And it's hard to get everyone together for another party. So we have we haven't done a Halloween party in six years. But if I do another Halloween party, I definitely will. Like fog machines and stuff like that. I would definitely go all, all out. Okay. 
Are you thinking of going to uh, like a Spirit Halloween or another Halloween oh, store? Oh yeah, and... oh yeah. Every single year, I go to a Spirit Halloween and look at costumes. Oh yeah, and that's the thing. And also, you run into uh, Kevin. Just said, yeah, he did a uh, Nightmare Before Christmas wedding. See, and that's that's the thing is oh. that getting a few things for that and getting ready. Um, a, having a few creepy items, and this is one of the things that. You can't. All, you can look on Amazon for things. You can look on. You know, there's certain stores online you can look at stuff. But able to go into the store and get a few things, or you wait until the you know get closer to Halloween when they start putting stuff on sale and selling it. But if they can't sell the item, they ship it back to their warehouse. The bigger items, they want to sell as much as they possibly can and clear out the store. They don't want to ship that many containers back. But I could tell you, the store we went past this past weekend, there must have been probably 20 containers out there um, right in front of the store. And again, they, they, they have the uh, snorkel out in front of the store, putting the sign up, the, the fabric sign, you know, that vinyl sign up saying, you know, Spirit Halloween, you know, <laughs> and the opening soon was in the front window. So it, it, it's one of the things that I would definitely say it's, it's a good thing to go look at. Uh, Brelly, what about you? Are you uh, going to go to your Halloween store or every day is Halloween in lacrosse because you had to deal with some of the uh people who love to see in the south on blue uh on um <laughs> on code blue cam uh, on youtube damn well we're gonna see a good one from last so week on the cam that's for damn sure oh no and it's, some, and it's somebody i know who and this is the good one he wasn't even in his car driving it and got a dui Oh, it was a show. Well, you, but, people uh, need you need to start spamming code blue cam and tell them that uh, DJ Brentley says that when his uh, someone he knows, not friend, acquaintance, got acquaintance. Uh, charged with DUI. We're not mentioning oh, names yeah. here. We're not saying any of that, but someone got charged with the a car, crime, and got, they probably be got on into there. a fight downtown. But because he showed up on camera in the car and got out of the car on drunk on camera, they got him for the DUI. Ah, uh, see, but, there you go. Do <laughs> stupid things will win stupid prizes. But when it this... comes to Halloween, actually, this year, my daughter and I, I, we had the cognizant decision, you know, to conversation last night. Do you want me to actually dress up for Halloween this year? And she's like, yeah, get one of those blow up costumes. So I get to pick whichever blow up costume I want. And I'm probably gonna do like a dinosaur or I would really like to do a minion, but I don't think she'd be as cool going trick-or-treating with me in a minion costume. But I also want to get something I can totally embarrass her with and pick her up from the first day of school with. So show up, pull out of the convertible in this big blow-up costume that will be used for Halloween. But I'm not going to a spirit Halloween store or any of that. I can barely I can barely handle going to retail outlets, especially in lacrosse, around certain holidays, that being one of them. So one of the guys I watch on YouTube is Michael Myers of Decatur, uh, Decatur, Illinois. And uh, he, he uh, of course, they're all excited for, uh, you know, Spirit Halloween and Michael's and all the rest of the stores, all the Halloween stuff they have started getting in now. And, you know, I would say that's probably always a classic now nah, blow up uh, outfit. But the, uh, the Michael Myers, you know, mask and uh, overalls. Can't go wrong with that. Yeah, it'd be always a great thing to stand or being creepy. <laughs> I'm sure you won't get oh, yeah. any calls oh, yeah. whatsoever. <laughs> um, but the thing is that, you know, I would I probably wouldn't go to school or anything like that. Just, you know, you're getting giving out candy on Halloween. Yeah, I can see that. Or around Halloween. But uh that'd also be a cool thing to DJ with be Michael Myers the DJ. Uh, cause you don't say anything, you just look at people, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Especially a request, you just stand there. They give a request, you just stand there. <laughs> uh, okay, Mr. Dixon, what about you, sir? Are you uh, thinking of going to uh, one of the Halloween stores to uh, start getting gear in case you do some Halloween parties? Or for someone who has a theme, uh, like Kevin said, a uh, Nightmare Before Christmas wedding? Uh, nah, because usually the uh, all the Halloween um, gigs that I do, um, the guest or the client usually take care of that. Or usually I've been doing the um, school Halloween parties. So the other people take care of that. I just do the music. 
But I'll buy, I'll buy I'll buy candy and maybe the um Jack o' Lantern bucket to put the candy in. That's about you don't get it. you don't get dressed up or anything like that. You don't go for, as a theme. No, they look out come to, they look out come to work. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I always tell people when they ask me what's what's your uh, costume, it's me. This is my costume right here. You're like I'm wearing all black, <laughs> black t-shirts, black shorts, or black pants. Yeah, that's that's what I'm doing. <laughs> that's that's my Halloween costume. I'm going to go over to uh, Jordan and Taylor. Uh, are you? I know you guys got little ones, but uh, are you guys looking to go to uh, Spirit and maybe getting a few things for uh, not only just in case, but also to use at your own house or with the kids? I'll definitely probably yeah probably I like to shop, <laughs> so probably <laughs> um, definitely will take the kids um, if there's anything cool that we could use yeah definitely buy it i'd like to do we haven't done a halloween party in yeah, i'd say we time. haven't done a halloween party in three four years i'd um, like to do another one when i when we first started or you know before i was truly born before i met taylor um i dj'd a lot of bar halloween parties a couple years in a row and then uh we did a couple uh just like private parties and stuff like that and i would always like kind of decorate the booth a little bit and stuff with some decor just we do chill. a lot of christmas parties and holiday parties every year that's a little bit that people seem to call us more for that i wish they would call us more for a halloween party that'd be fun yeah i <laughs> actually really enjoy halloween like i i seen uh the other day someone had dressed up they had i don't know how they made it but it was basically a self-driving dj booth and they were driving down the road DJing and that that's something I would find extremely fun we do uh, take cool. like some of our lights and put them around the house or like the fog machine like yeah, for the kids up, when they trick-or-treat and come I'll so. set up a speaker and put spooky the spooky sounds <laughs> on it and all the kids are terrified but that it's nothing compared to what they do some of the people do in my neighborhood oh yeah there there's there's people go all out they they have like yeah they they go all out for they also go all out for Christmas too they have like you know, oh, um, we yeah. we have one of those that does the whole. He has a um, like a watchfire digital display mounted above his garage door all year round, just for his Christmas. So, yeah, we yeah, have it, it. It's cool when people pull up and you actually have a radio station. You know, you can turn to an FM that's station how, that's how it and they is. have I'm some like, plan. Oh. Yeah, yeah, he you can't even get a, a a spot. Sometimes there's so many people in our town come and see it. It's actually incredible. Yeah, that that that's the fun part, and he goes all out for Halloween too. Uh, his neighbor does, but he actually the the Christmas one they the first year it was just him. He has five houses involved now. It's the whole street. It, it's and a yeah, Griswold neighbor, right, huh? <laughs> it, it's incredible. You know the the fun thing. I've seen a few people when they uh, transition from Halloween to Christmas, they'll have out there like. Uh, you you'll see you you'll see the changeover, but they keep the display like full, and you'll see some stuff like winter stuff also pop up, and then you'll see like they'll have out there like you go out go past the next day, and they'll have look like little um, uh, gnomes or for little elves out there look like they're moving things, but then they're like uh, someone had it was like a monster attacking one of the elves, and the other elves were like had like uh, little spears or something like that, like they like going to attack the monster and. Uh, then it was like up there for a few days and also a few days goes past there's more elves doing work and they find everything switched over to all Christmas mm -hmm. and it went over like a week and a half or so which is uh it's, it's pretty fun if you people get into that it's it's a lot of fun uh, uh just to let you guys know Halloween is a Thursday this year so the 26th the 25th 26th and 27th is the weekend before Halloween so if you have not been booked, that might be something to go looking for a booking. Uh, and that's a great thing for that. Uh, you know, keep your dates open. Uh, next person I can go to is actually Jeff. Jeff, I know you got some uh, teenagers there, but uh, do you go to uh, like Spirit or one of the Halloween stores and grab stuff for uh, for clients? Or do you uh, just deck your own house out and go crazy and uh, run after people with, uh, uh, you know, fake blood and throw candy at them? 
uh, chase people with chainsaws around here in North Carolina. I think that's there the best. There you go. But uh, no, I don't. I don't do a lot of that. My wife does the decorating uh, around the house, so she really gets into it. Uh, for DJing, I don't normally pick up a whole lot of stuff like that. Um, I do have uh, for my setup. I've got um, you know I. I kind of specialize with music videos. Uh, I do have a lot of music videos that are Halloween related. Um, I've got some shaders for a virtual DJ that are Halloween related, like uh, pumpkins, different things. Uh, I can tweak my lighting a little bit to give some scary, you know, to some scary lighting effects. So that's what I do for the fall festivals that I that I usually have in uh, October. Um, I've never had a Halloween um, themed wedding. Uh, look forward to having one at some point. That would be fun. But uh, so, yeah, that, that's kind of what I do on my end. Yeah, I've done a couple Halloween themed weddings and it was it was fun. You know, I just, of course, I went as myself and Tracy, you know, we didn't dress up. We were the only two people there not dress up. It's funny when the bride and groom are dressed up and everybody else is dressed up and we're the only ones not dressed up. And there's actually a video on YouTube. We did a, uh, you can call it a Halloween themed. It was June, beginning of June, a couple of years ago uh, at a haunted house here in Chicagoland. It was, uh, it was awesome. The staff there was awesome. Uh, they have, uh, they actually have uh till death to uh, do us part. And there's two uh, skeletons underneath that neon sign. It's pretty cool. Um, Pretty cool video. It's here on YouTube. Uh, but yeah, it, it's it's fun when you get into that kind of stuff. You get into themed weddings. Uh, the other thing also I find at uh, like Halloween uh, stores, as well as a few other places, are like tumblers. They have LED lights in the bottom of them. And if you're going to something that's a themed item, like a sci-fi themed wedding or uh, something like that, you have a, little, a, a glass you know, filled with water for you to drink. But you have the little LED lights in the bottom flashing. It can give you a kind of cool look, be like, oh, hey, okay, you're in the theme a little bit, but you're not like all over it, you know. Matt, I see that you actually joined us from your vacation. <laughs> yeah. How you doing? Good. Uh, I've just been doing a lot. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I saw the pictures and stuff like that. It, it's uh, it's it's crazy with all the stuff you're doing out there on the vacation. <laughs> I'm glad you get to see some time off and yes. you and your girlfriend uh... enjoying it. It's a fun little town. We uh, went to this place called the Mystery Spot today, which is like uh, where gravity doesn't exist. I mean, it's basically just like architecturally designed to like mess with your mind. Um, so like there's houses that are sideways and like water that flows uphill. Um, it's uh, It was pretty cool. So we did that. Uh, went to a local brewery, uh, which was cool. Got some food. Uh, checked out a couple beaches and parks today and... Tomorrow we're going up to Six Flags in NorCal, or not Six Flags, whatever the Cedar Fair one is, Great America, or Great Adventure, Great America, I think. And uh, yeah, all that between four gig that I have on uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So uh, oh, there you it go. Was just, it was just one, and then over the past week and a half, it turned into four. So uh, nothing, no weddings, just one, one wedding on Saturday, which has already been there, and the other are just little minimal preparation gigs. So uh and that's Take that's the uh, that's the thing is that when you uh, when you get that sometimes you get the ball rolling and then all of a sudden boom boom boom. A uh, couple of questions for you because you're late yeah. into the show. Um, first thing first, where do you get your inspiration or where do you find your newest, latest, hottest thing to try uh, for gear wise? You know, for trends. How do you uh, how do you find trends? How did you find like the uh, facade that the same facade I have now? in front of your uh, table. How do you find that? How do you uh, decide to do uh, that? I I mean, I do see a lot of people uh, posting on the Facebook groups and I think I get some ideas from there. A lot of times there's people that are in like other countries that are, they have stuff that like hasn't made it over here yet. So uh, I think there, I mean, I watch a lot of YouTube and I see everybody's gig logs. So I kind of see if anybody's doing something new or different. Um, but I also like, I try to be unique. So like, I want to be the first one to have this or that, or first one to do this. Uh, so that's kind of me. I don't really, I mean, in terms of gear, like I, I don't, I mean, you know, I don't like to have the same stuff everybody else does. I mean, nobody else is using 
dual 21s at a wedding. No one else is doing, uh, very minimal people are doing the kind of audio I'm doing and the kind of lighting I'm doing. And, uh, you know, I just think if you have the DJs that do the same thing with two moving heads and some tube lights or two moving heads and two wash effects or just two wash effects and some up lights, like it gets boring. You know, everybody using Evox or LD systems, like it's all just the same crap. And it's like, what, what makes you different? So I think you just have to kind of find it yourself and like, say, Oh, that looks interesting. Oh, that looks cool. Or, um, stuff like that. So I see a lot of cool stuff on like the, the Chinese, uh, lighting company websites that I follow on Instagram and on Facebook. And, uh, I get some ideas from them and, uh, try to be the first one before everyone copies it, I guess. Yeah. There, there you go. And then, uh, finally, uh, Halloween, uh, mm -hmm. I know it's uh middle of toward the end of July, uh, Halloween, I, I, I just was this past weekend, uh, Tracy and I were out and about, and we saw a uh, Halloween store. They were putting a, the uh, the vinyl sign on the outside of the building, getting ready. ready. They had like a bunch of containers outside, um, and those are going to be opening up soon. Do you uh, do you go all out for Halloween? Do you go and get stuff in case people ask for you to DJ a Halloween party or Halloween-themed wedding? Or like Kevin said, he had a... Uh, 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 was it nightmare before Christmas wedding um, before? Um, I don't really like, do I go all out for Halloween? No. Um, I personally don't I, like Halloween's my least favorite holiday after the 4th of July. Um, I just don't like either. Uh, but I'm also never booked on either. So there's that. Uh, um, I don't know. I, I, I like to go to a Halloween party every year, but it's usually like the Saturday or Friday or Sunday before Halloween and not like on the actual night itself. Um, I've never had a wedding on Halloween. I've had Halloween themed weddings. Um, I, as of now, my Halloween is open. My weekend around it is booked, but that Thursday is still open. So we'll see what happens. Um, I mean, I would, I, I've done Halloween events, uh, where I've and I have some really cool Halloween remixes. I've got like a dope thriller remix. I've got some uh, like a dubstep remix of Grim Grin, Grim Grinning Ghost, which is what they play in the Haunted Mansion. I've got an RL Grime remix of some other Halloween song. I've got a bunch of really cool Halloween spooky themed stuff. Ghostbusters, I got a great remix of. So I I just need the time to play it. So. And th that's the hard part is uh, you know find the right place to do that because not everyone wants to have that played even during the winter time i'm I'm sure you guys run into we have weddings in uh november and december they don't want christmas themed they want winter and it's you know hard to distinguish the two of them you know and some people say i don't want any christmas songs played at my wedding if it's not a christmas mm -hmm. wedding and you don't play in christmas music but people will come and ask hey you're gonna play in christmas music and it's like no, the bride and groom said they don't want Christmas music. This is a winter wedding, not a Christmas wedding. So you have to follow what the customer wants, obviously. But also, it, it's one of the things that it, it's it's hard. And we have that stuff, and you have that in your uh, your toolbox. Those those little parts, those tools. You kind of want to use them to see what people react to, and especially you want to make sure that you get a good reaction uh, for those certain songs. And that's the hard mm -hmm. part: is you have them, you want you want to pull the trigger around, but it's find the right place to use them. Um, Ken, uh, Kevin said, uh, did buy a mask and a fake knife, uh, for himself to wear as a costume for parties. Uh, he wears a Menards vest. Uh, he used to be a Menards employee back a while ago, uh, and go as an employee that had a rough day at work. <laughs> that's, that's pretty rough running around with a mask and a fake knife and a uh, vest, but, uh, you know, again, hopefully uh, it, it's good customer service, you know. <laughs> um, really quickly before we uh, get off of here, uh, we also have come up next week, we have a guest. Uh, so far, it looks like we're still on track for it. He's going to be offering and releasing a brand new product. And uh, again, the only thing I could say, it's going to be larger than a bread box. So make sure you tune in next week. Um, I'm going to double check during uh, the week. Uh, here uh, to make sure that he's available for next week and good to go. Uh, and we'll see, as uh, far as I know, it, he should be. Uh, and then we'll uh, go from there, and you guys will get to see some, something, hopefully something exclusive that he's going to launch here on the show. 
The other thing also is make sure that, please make sure that you comment down below. Uh, but before we go, one other thing also, I want to thank all the DJs here for putting up all through all the months and stuff like that. And every single week here, they give up a lot of their time. They spend a lot of time here. So make sure you show them love. Go down to the social media. Tell them that. I always put links down below for everyone's social media, especially like, you know, Tori and Jay, uh, Jordan and Taylor, if I can say everything right, and Dave Brentley and <laughs> Solstice and Jeff and Cool Thing, uh, Hunter, as well as Mr. Dixon. I put their social media down below. That's because I want you to go to their channels, show them some love, make sure you, you subscribe to them, follow them. Uh, Jordan and Taylor, I'm still waiting for a YouTube channel. Uh, I know they got their Instagram. I always put the link down below for Instagram so you can follow their adventures there. Follow them, show them some thumbs up, give some hearts, show them lots of love there. Because again, they're giving up their time here. Uh, they're battling bad internet there with uh, trees down and whatnot over in Northwest Indiana. And of course, uh, Chicagoland, uh, we got hit by those uh, great uh, storms from uh, not only Sunday night, but also last night too. Not fun. <laughs> I like that. So, uh, go ahead. And I like that. And make sure you check out my podcast called Groove on the Go. It's all about mobile DJing. It's right on Spotify. It's exclusively on Spotify. And go ahead, uh, go ahead, uh, Jordan Taylor. I was just gonna say I'm lucky to have power. There's still forty eight thousand people in my area without power, and they said it could be up to fourteen days in some areas. I think Comed was saying. Um, I think Channel Nine was saying. Um, some people will be active tonight, some people by tomorrow, and more people by Friday. But, you know, I, I was like reading some of these are pretty bad off, especially in some of the areas that got hit with tornadoes, and they may get power for a while. And the thing is, right now, is the running out of crews. The crews are, you know, running 18 hour days. They're tired, mm -hmm. they're worn out. They had all the stuff down to hurricanes. Now they're coming back to rent all this because there's a bunch of crews down in Texas. Um, so, yeah, it, 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 it's a stretch to all the uh, power companies and everything else. And here goes Mr. Dixon back in. <laughs> but, uh, again, you also want to thank Mr. Dixon, too. Make sure you follow him on his uh, uh, YouTube channel. He has a lot of great information on there, a lot of great gigs. But, uh, you know, again, I, I want to thank everyone here. Hopefully, you know, I see everyone safe, and I'm glad that everyone got to make it here tonight. Uh, and, again, we're only missing – uh, one person right now. Uh, but, you know, again, working DJs, people on vacation. Matt's even coming in from his vacation to come say hi and hang out. And that's a great thing. Uh, so with everything like that, uh, who wants to who wants to take us out tonight? You know what? I'm going to have I'm gonna Matt take us out tonight. Thanks for tuning in to the DJ Roundtable. Until next week, stay safe, y'all. Peace. Have a good night.